Good evening. We'd like to welcome, welcome you all to this month's school board meeting. And uh, I will give the pledge. Um, Amy will offer the invocation, and we'll go to that point. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Heavenly Father, we're grateful that we could come here together as a school board. We're thankful for the families that we have in our school district. We're especially grateful at this time for the teachers and the administrators and the long hours that they've put in to help educate our children and to prepare for the school year. We're thankful for the maintenance and the bus drivers and the cafeteria workers and all those that come together to help make educating our youth a priority. We pray for thy choicest blessings to be upon them and bless us this evening as we make decisions that we will do so that will best benefit our children and our school district. And we say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. <clears throat> I'll entertain a motion to approve the agenda. A motion for the approval of the agenda. A second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. 1.2 superintendent reports to include comments on extracurricular activities, curriculum, and current events. Mr. Housley. I feel like I should stand and, and uh, talk to you, but I'm going to stay right here and, and just share all the, all the things that have, have gone on in the first six days of school. We got six days to report under our belts, and, and we're excited about that. Um, the start of school hasn't come with, without challenge. Um, we will uh, be the first to, to share that with you. Um, we have some things that we've been, been reviewing quite extensively. Um, kind of a, a blessing maybe and a curse is that, um, it, well, let me put it this way. When, uh, last night I was at my son's little, little league football uh, practice and the coach was practicing offense and he was going against a invisible defense and he said you know it's hard to hard to prepare our offense without an actual defense there and uh, that's kind of like preparing for the school year we we were preparing and and had the number of kids that we had last year in our minds and we we prepared for those and staffed appropriately and uh, set up all of our scheduling and things and then lo and behold the first day of school and uh, fortunately and to our our excitement we had more kids than we planned on show up on day one which is is phenomenal um, we're excited about that we're glad that people are choosing to educate their children and show those schools uh, with that comes some challenges and we're we're facing those challenges head on we um, we have some issues that we're working out with right now through transportation um, to make sure that we're able to effectively um, bus some of our kids uh, where they need to go um, we have an old fleet and we face some another curveball with some of our buses that have uh, I don't know dropped their guts so to speak um, they uh, we've had a couple go down um, in the last couple of days our mechanics are working tirelessly to get those back up and running they are able to incrementally get those back up and and running um, I think that's an expression of what our needs are when our fleet is as as old as it is um, but we're we're doing our best. We're we meet. Uh, we've met quite often as administrative teams to discuss that. Um, we've been there at the bus stops to or uh, the bus loading area to to evaluate and to see where we need to go. Um, we also have um, 
evaluated some of our um, our other things that we're, we're talking about. We we've made some changes with scheduling and and um, brought um, times in line with one another. Um, I, one thing that I'll, I'll applaud, I feel very happy about outside of the first day of school, which is always hectic. Everyone wants to get to school early. From that point on, um, it's been pretty uh, a pretty nice traffic flow uh, for the most part around the district, especially around the district office in Cougar Lane. That's been much improved than uh, over last year. So that's exciting with the opening of that new uh, drop-off point. Um, we have... Uh, some things that we're, we're looking at at the junior high, I want to share with you yes, uh, just yesterday, I spent um, time at all three junior high lunches. Um, initially, like anywhere else, um, lunches on the first two days of schools are, are slow. Um, they walk up to the thing and have to enter their PIN number in. And so most of them, I, I want to say some, but most of them forget their PIN number and um, they have to go through the process of getting that, and and the the ladies behind working have to uh, recognize the names, making sure that and faces. So that took a little bit longer. But when I was in there yesterday, everyone at all three lunches they were served in 10 minutes, um, with 15 minutes left in the lunch period. Everyone who wanted to go outside was was outside playing and, and having a a good time, and uh, those who wanted to stay in, there was a couple of pods of, of girls that just wanted to sit and, and relax and and socialize and that was that was acceptable and they were able to do that um, so things are getting better it's getting much much improved and and um, I know dr. Dorsett has met with her leadership team uh, several times since the start of school to make make adjustments and and prior you know to to troubleshoot and to to evaluate the the difficulties that they might be having and and to make things better. And uh, I applaud her and her staff's commitment to, to making those improvements. Um, also, there, you know, there's been a little bit of confusion with what win, win time was or what DMS is. And as we, we roll into the days, that'll become very, very fluid, and people will understand it, and the kids will understand it, and, and everyone will get into the flow. But um, Dr. Dorsett and her team at the junior high have, have looked at what that means, too. And, and they've got some very creative and innovative ideas. For that time where um, I, I don't want to speak for a team they're going to evaluate that tomorrow morning but it might look something like a um, during wind time it being something like a structured play uh, time and I, what I mean by structured play there would be areas where they could go in and participate in certain activities that are supervised and, and more structured than would be in a free recess time um, and then at the same time we could utilize that to help reteach those kids who, who need some help and uh, maybe didn't um, gain mastery of the standards. So they're, they're looking at some things, how that'll wash out. It'll, it'll be good for kids, and, and I think her staff is right on that and working hard to, towards that. Um, our numbers across the district are up significantly, as I mentioned. Um, I can't remember exactly what the numbers were, but every class in the junior high is at 200, or either right below 200 or, or, or above 200. Um, so that puts us over 600 at the junior high. We're over 500, and currently with enrollments at capacity at Nicholas, um, we're over eight, 800 and I want to say 860 at the high school. Um, Linden's at 195, and they were at 178 at the end of last school year. Um, so uh, Whipple's um, up in all grade levels. Uh, we have lower class sizes in our, in our kindergarten, which is exciting. Um, so the teachers can really focus in on, on where those kids need to need to be met. So a lot of things going on, positives and, and challenges. Uh, we're in day six, and, and it's just getting better every day, so we're hoping to, to continue to improve. I, I will say that um, we share the concern everyone else does, that we're trying to find solutions to, to transport our kids, and we want to make that a good experience for everyone. But... Um, when you're tackling a monster, it, it does take a, a little bit of time, and I, I would hope that we, um, there could be some patience in, in that as we, we try to work through solutions. It, daily, we're, we're making adjustments, and we're out there evaluating, and, and um, I think we can come to a good solution. Um, just for the, the board's knowledge, we do have a, um, a slightly used bus, about 55,000 miles. It's on 
on its way. We got a pretty decent, really decent deal for it, but it won't be here for about a, a week or so. But that'll fill in for where, where the ones that have tanked on us uh, let us down. So um, that's kind of some things that we're we're trying to do there. Also, um, not to not to plug anything, but um, we've had openings for bus driving positions for quite a while. So if there are bus drivers who are looking for work, we'd love to put them on a bus. Um, and uh, we got a call from a, a neighboring district who's having the same issue as far as finding drivers. They called and said, hey, do you have any drivers you haven't hired yet? And they're like, we, we're looking for drivers even to consider to hire. So they're in the same boat and, and um, uh, we're, we're gonna continue to make those improvements and, and work hard. I wanna also share that I, I wanna applaud our staff because I, after being in the lunch with the junior high, I kind of walked down the hallways and spent some time uh, shoulder to shoulder with the teachers in the trenches. And, and uh, man, they, they have, uh, they, we made a lot of changes and, and uh, they, they understand the difficulty in those changes, but they all had the attitude of, I'm gonna roll up my sleeve and we're tackling this obstacle and we're committed to do great things for kids. And you gotta applaud that kind of resiliency and, and desire to do good things for kids. It's, as we move into the school year, I think that's going to pay dividends for our district and for, for the children of Sholo. So um, that's my report. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Mr. Housley, would you do us a favor and let uh, your admin staff and make sure that they share it with the, the teachers and, and, and all, the, all the staff that we understand how crazy it is beginning of school year can be and we're so appreciative of their efforts. Okay, yes, I will. That, Thank please you. appreciate that. 1.3 approval to change the date of the October board meeting due to fall break. Mr. President, does that date falls on the 10th of October, which is the Thursday of fall break. And if it pleases the board, um, that is time when we encourage administrative staff and others maybe to get a day off or or whatever, so if we can move that. Um, I would propose um, the, I believe the 17th might be the the next best date. First day is the 19th. 19th, I'm sorry. Yeah, 19th. 19th. So the week after what week after. normally would have been our meeting. Yeah. What do you guys think? I'm good with that. Okay. So I'll entertain a motion to move our October board meeting from the 12th to the 19th. I'll make a motion to move our meeting. Second the motion. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Um, last year when a meeting was moved like this, it was auto dialed out. Can we make sure that that happens so that people will know that there's the board meeting was changed? Is that something we can do? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. 19th it is. Okay. 1.4, call to the audience. Looks like we have one person. Mr. Adams? Good evening. Um, thanks for hearing me. <clears throat> for, uh, for the past two years, I've been the digital media teacher at the junior high school. I just wanted to publicly thank the board for the opportunity to, to be the teacher there and uh, to have all the experiences that I've had uh, with the students and with the staff. And it's, it's been a real pleasure for, for me and a really good growing experience. And um, <clears throat> uh, shortly before the start of the school year, I uh, got a new job in the, in the Valley. And um, the unfortunate timing window of it meant that I, I left Dr. Dorset in a bit of a pickle with finding a replacement for me. Um, but fortunately, she was able to find a replacement. Uh, Mr. Woolley, who was the teacher before me, um, who I replaced two years ago, um, is stepping in for me uh, tomorrow, effective tomorrow. And um, so that's, it's, been, it's been very nice uh, and just uh, a lot more smooth than I was afraid it would be. <laughs> um, but uh, my reason for speaking to you tonight is, is to just 
to, to thank you for the opportunity for the, that I've had over the last two years, and then just to um, describe kind of <clears throat> the experience that we've been having lately. My wife and I have been, for the past six months, been very prayerful and fasting and trying to find a new opportunity um, to live in the valley, to live closer to my wife's family, as well as to live uh, closer to my grandmother, who is not doing very well, losing her sight and things like that. And um, so she's very excited that we're moving down and already has a long to-do list for me. But <clears throat> we, um, uh, we're we we're excited to move down there and just just the way that everything has fallen in line and in order for that to happen has been very neat. And um, I, I just met Mr. Woolley about a week ago. And um, I'm not sure if you're aware, but the reason he left two years ago is because his wife was sick and he left to take care of her and, and shortly thereafter she she passed away and um so he's been you know in mourning for the past two years and, and so but when i met him about a week ago he said that people had asked him if he um would ever go back to teaching and he said i would only ever go back if i could get my old classroom back so it, it's all worked out pretty well and falling into place pretty well <clears throat> sorry <clears throat> so um we're just very grateful for everything that's happened and how it's all fallen into place. Sorry. But um, <clears throat> I just wanted to make the board aware of these circumstances. And um, again, see so that I'm grateful and um, I, um, I, I do apologize for the shortness of leaving and that it was so close to the school year. And um, it, it is cool that things have worked out the way that they have. And um, I said a lot of terrible goodbyes to the students and things today, but um, again, grateful for the opportunity. And um, I, I understand there may be a fine associated with leaving early and uh, would, would ask that the board consider, you know, just the way that things have fallen into place so well. Um, uh, when making the decision on that point. And uh, again, thank you so much, and that's, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Appreciate you coming to see us. 1.5, future board agenda items. Anybody have anything? Okay. 2.1, approval of overnight out-of-state travel mr housley at, at this time mr president I, I believe all of the how that was approved at last board meeting and there wasn't anything last minute to put on this agenda so there's no no items under that thank you 3.1 approval of an additional linden kindergarten position mr housley so as i talked about in my superintendent's report we we've been blessed with uh, students choosing to come to to sholo uh, sholo schools including Linden um, being up from where they are. Um, kindergarten um, at the start of school was at 30. They're at 32 now. We've, we have um, put a long-term substitute in to, to split that class into two classes of 16. Um, and uh, we, we currently would like to, to consider having that, um, if we could find a qualified individual to, to fill that, to have that position added in, in, at Linden School. Um, we, because of our numbers, we did, we did post that, but with your blessing, we'll continue to post and seek that, uh, that position. I motion for the approval of an additional Linden kindergarten position as presented. I second it. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Um, yeah. Can you just, what are the ratios at, like around at Whipple? So they're similar, right? Yeah. So there, there's about, um, uh, there's, the classes on average are about 18 at Whipple. There are some that are in the low 20s, 22, 23-ish, uh, but that's about where, where we're at um, with that. Um, obviously, you know, you know, I think it's the opinion of the board, and I don't want to speak for you, but it, our opinion is that 32 is too many for a kindergarten class. So um, giving us a little room for, for a family to move in or, or something like that to happen and, and them have kindergartners, I think that feels a little bit better. Well, 
Oh, I remember years ago, the board had a goal to keep kindergarten, especially below 20. So I'm happy we're making a change there. So the intent is to keep the, the sub until the position is filled. Yeah, the, um, in a long-term situation, we, we would have to keep that open and, and try to fill it. Um, I can tell you that right now at this time of the year, even in July, teachers were, were a dime a dozen, very hard to find. So. Um, yeah, the, the prospect of filling that is it's difficult. Long, but we, yeah. we have a, a really good long-term sub in there, and, and she's doing a bang-up job now, so we, we look forward to not missing a beat. Um, how money-wise did we plan for this? Yeah, we, we always plan some contingency in the budget in case something happens, and Mr. Schubert has put those contingency in to, to make sure we can meet any un, unforeseen circumstance like this. I appreciate that forethought. Anything else? I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 3.2, approval of resignations, terminations, retirements. Uh, Mr. President, members of the board, we have uh, a few uh, termination and some resignations for you, uh, for your consideration at this time. As a termination, Ms. Uh, Elizabeth Maxwell as a bus driver, um, and resignations, Crystal Price as the junior high health tech, Wanda Mann as a Whipple Ranch food service worker, Paula Whipple as the Superintendent Human Resource Secretary, William Harris as the bus driver, as a bus driver, Mildred Dovey as a bus driver, Leslie Arce as a transportation co-director, uh, Linda George as bus driver, Joanne Barber as a teacher assistant, and Josh Adams as a junior high teacher. I would recommend that you approve these this termination and resignations as outlined. Make a motion to approve the terminations and resignations. Designations as presented. I second it. Have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Do we need any special terminology for anything? Mm -mm. No. Nope. Okay. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 3.3 .3, approval of new hires. Mr. Housley. We'd like to recommend the filing new hires and, and transfers as outlined. Tina uh, <clears throat> Stabenow as a junior high health tech, Linda Meister as the preschool teacher assistant, Amanda uh, Stabenow as a Whipple Ranch teacher assistant, Amy Erickson as a junior high teacher assistant, Amanda Haig as a contracted bus driver, and Philip Brad Woolley as a junior high um, teacher. Um, under the ESI contract. I would recommend that we um, approve these out as outlined. I motion for the approval of new hires as presented. I second it. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 3.4, approval of certified and classified substitutes, Mr. Housley. Following individuals have been recommended to the board for your approval. Rec Rebecca Skinner, Richard Skinner, Katie Schnell as a substitute teacher, K-12, um, and Angela Merrifeld also as a substitute teacher, K-12. Those are all K-12 substitutes. As a classified, Autumn Garvin, substitute teacher assistant in food and sub food service, and Linda Meister as the sub teacher assistant, um, and that'll be on Fridays. Um, I would recommend those approvals as outlined. Motion for approval of certified and classified substitutes as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 3.5, approval of stipends and volunteers, Mr. Housley. There's a number of these, and I, I will leave it at the board's discretion to, to look at them. I won't go through them all, but they are, again, available for review if, if anyone would like to review those. But we have... Um, some stipends for our um, our tech buddies. Those stipends come from a rural and low income schools grant. Um, they help with uh, help with the teachers and their their tech issues that might come up at the at the sites. Um, minor tech issues. There are also some non sports stipends in there. 
to also point out to you some high school sports stipends as well as our district volunteers there on the end. Junior high school um, coaches um, are the bulk of those for our volunteers. I would recommend that you approve these um, stipends and volunteers as outlined. I recommend we approve the stipends and volunteers as outlined. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 5.1, approval of food service prices for the 17-18 school year. Mr. Schumer. So every year um, we have to evaluate our food service pricing for the um, ADE. Um, we are in a great situation in our food service department where our actually we are a, a functional department. We actually make money in our food service department. And any increase to pricing according to ADE would lead us to an excess cash balance. So with ADE's approval, they have allowed us to stay at the same rates as previous years. So we're bringing this for you tonight to have your approval on food service pricing. Make a motion for the approval of the 2017-18 food service prices as presented. I second the motion. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 5.2, approval of intergovernmental agreement between City of Solo and the District for Playback System and Custodial Services. So the, the City has um, presented the District with an inter, intergovernmental agreement, which is the IGA, and, in and they are going to be giving the District, and more specifically the High School Department, a video and audio playback system that they use, that, or they no longer use in return for custodial services that the district already provides to the city. So we are just asking for your um, your blessing on this and your approvals tonight. I motion. I motion for the approval of the IGA between the district and the city of Sholo as presented. I second it. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Um, just a question. You said that we already provide the service. Is this for like use of the auditorium? Yes, fields? so we already clean up the auditorium after they after the city uses it and everything else. So it's it's custodial services for events that the city holds that we already provide. Okay. That's all. Anything else? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Five point three. Approval of intergovernmental agreement for the formation of the Navajo County Information Technology Educational Consortium to serve public schools and libraries in Navajo and Gila counties. Could that be any longer? No. <laughs> no. Those are big words, too. I was chewing gum. I almost messed up. They are. Mr. Schubert, you want to share? I can share this. This is a... Um, this is an intergovernmental agreement, and you'll notice on the IGA um, several school districts and library associations around Navajo County. This is in response to the states making available funding for um, the broadband initiative to bring broadband to rural communities across the state. Um, we, we did this one other time earlier in the year. Um, we put out bids for consideration. And um, they came out a substantial amount of money, so much so that we couldn't uh, even entertain the bids. So um, we, the, the group re, uh, regrouped from that, and, and uh, some, some didn't want to partner with it. We got more ducks in a row as far as all the schools and the libraries and, and what we needed. And we put out another RFP. And this is an intergovernmental agreement that allows us to participate in that request for proposal to now entertain um, uh, bids from companies to help bring that in. So what it would look like is a, a, a broadband hub in Holbrook and then one in Sholo to where it would bring access. Um, that could include, you know, dark wires that come in, which could be for further expansion over the years for libraries and hospitals can tap into it, city government agencies and other things like that. But for this IGA, it's just several of the school districts around Navajo County and the library districts. And so I would recommend that we um, partner in that IGA and, and move forward. It's of no cost to us other than um, the consultation fee I'm putting putting together the proposal and other things like that. If, the, if we were to get that 
the state would fund that through through this IGA and, and the agreement. So. Make a motion to approve the intergovernmental inter agreement between the district and the city of Shark as presented. I second the motion. I motion a second. Any further discussion? Questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. 6.0 consent agenda, Mr. Schubert. So tonight we're bringing before you on our consent agenda the ratification of our expense and payroll vouchers, the ratification of the junior high and high school activities and revenues expenditures, the approval of the governing board minutes for the regular board meeting on July 13th. And we are also bringing before you the following donations. Judy Slankert on behalf of the late Dave Nelson donated golf clubs valued at $200 to the high school golfing club. Adams Family Dentistry donated money and goods for staff meals and prizes. Ginger at its Magic Landscaping donated, donated money and goods for staff meals and prizes. Guild Mortgage donated money or goods for staff meals and prizes. Silver Sword Asset Management donated money or goods for staff meals and prizes. Horace Mann donated money or goods for staff meals and prizes. Summit Healthcare donated money or goods for staff meals and prizes. Jeff Walker CPA donated money or goods for staff meals and prizes. Advantage Realty donated money or goods for staff meals and prizes. The Whipple Ranch PTSO donated money or goods for staff meals and prizes. And Yvonne at North Star Salon donated money or goods for staff meals and prizes. These staff meals and prizes were during our, our orientation for the, the, the new beginning of the school year. We also bring before you the approval of the following high school booster clubs for the upcoming school year. The football booster club, the boys and girls soccer boosters, the high school grad night organization, the spirit line boosters, the fine arts and choir boosters, the girls basketball boosters, the wrestling booster club, the softball booster club, the baseball booster club, and the track and field boosters. We bring these to you tonight for your approvals. A motion for the approval of the consent agenda as presented. I second it. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. I will now uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. Move we adjourn. I second the motion. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you all very much for coming.